I am Pastor Mike Schmidt at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Manhattan, Kansas, and this is our worship service for the fifth Sunday in Lent, March 29th, 2020. We, like the rest of Manhattan, as well as the rest of the country, are in somewhat of a holding pattern, and yet we are striving to continue our ministry activities online, and thus we have these worship services. We are striving also to do the same thing with our Wednesday night program, Basic Training. It will resume this Wednesday, April 1st at 6 p.m. If you or your children have not yet received your invitation, please contact the church office so that we can get you connected Know also that we are building a new church building. It is on the far west side of Manhattan. It was actually outside the city limits until the city annexed us in. I had the opportunity to walk through the facilities along with other staff folks and leadership. And we are excited about moving out there this summer. So know that that is coming. Please keep that in your prayers. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In peace let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the
this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the you and also with you let us pray almighty God in whom is life now and forever through your son's suffering and death you have given us victory over all we ever need fear in sin eternal death and the power of the devil breathe into our bones and our souls your life-giving word that we rejoice in your forgiveness and serve you and others in love and faithfulness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In this, our last Sunday in the season of Lent prior to Holy Week, we are given the truth of the life the Lord has come to bring. Ezekiel sees a vision of dry bones brought to life by the breath and power of God. In the Epistle to the Romans, we hear of our life in Christ through the Spirit and in that life to live, not of the flesh. In the Holy Gospel, we hear the greatest sign through which our Lord foreshadows his own resurrection, bringing a dead and decaying Lazarus back to life, which also foreshadows the resurrection and eternal life for all who believe. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is from Ezekiel chapter 37, The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual is from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. O oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
The epistle is from Romans chapter 8, Life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were there with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for today's proclamation is the Old Testament lesson that was read earlier from Ezekiel chapter 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. Our lungs expand, and as they do, air is taken in. And then our lungs process that air. Our lungs take out the oxygen in the air, and it gets attached to hemoglobin. And those hemoglobin deliver that oxygen through the bloodstream to needy cells. And the cells give up waste, including carbon dioxide, and that's delivered through the bloodstream back to the lungs. And when our lungs contract, we exhale and out goes the carbon dioxide. It's called breathing. The average person breathes 25,000 times a day. It's obviously pretty important to life. At the end of life, we stop breathing. Ezekiel, he sees the reverse process, not going from life to death, but rather from death to life. What Ezekiel sees is a picture of what happens and what will happen to us. Jesus gives us the breath of resurrected life. God's people haven't been breathing very well. Sometimes our lungs don't work like they should. We have lung problems like asthma, bronchitis, COPD, pneumonia, emphysema, cancer. And sometimes we don't help ourselves by smoking or vaping or not exercising. And our experience tells us that we also have a spiritual breathing problem. You see, we inhale things that are bad for us. We look at things we shouldn't. We think about things that we shouldn't. We say things that we shouldn't. We covet that corner office or, or maybe the car that we can't afford or maybe a different spouse than the one that we have. We hold anger in our heart, dwelling on ways to get back at people and hurt them. It reveals that we have a spiritual breathing problem. Now, our text is a picture of Israel, what it's like both physically and spiritually. They were a valley of very dry bones. They had suffered the destruction of Jerusalem, and many, most of their folks had been taken into exile and to captivity in Babylon. God is, in our text, revealing to Ezekiel Israel's situation. And folks, he reveals our situation as well. Breathing death dries up our bones. Verse 11 of our text, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are indeed cut off. That was not only Israel's prayer, folks, that should be our prayer as well, especially during this Lenten season. On our own, we are dry bones in the valley of death. But a breath of fresh air is on the way. It begins with the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is living and active, Hebrews 4.12 tells us. And where the word is, there also is the spirit of the Lord. Verse 9 of our text says, prophesy to the breath, say to the breath. That word breath in our English version comes from the Hebrew word ruach, and it means spirit, wind, and breath. And 
where you have the spirit, then you also have life. Verse five of our text says, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And then verse nine, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. That word breath and the word spirit both come from the Hebrew word ruach. And so the word with the spirit not only give life, but they give us back the breath of life that we lost in the fall. Ezekiel 37 looks an awful lot like the creation story where God created man and he first formed man and then he breathed life into man. And so now God calls his people to take a breather. In the gospel, Jesus calls out to a dead man, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus goes from being dead to being alive again. And in John chapter 5, Jesus says, An hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear my voice and come out. You see, the breath that Jesus gives recreates. It recreates our souls so that we believe and trust in him. And it will eventually recreate this body. This breath of resurrected life happens because Jesus gave up his breath on the cross. Listen to Matthew chapter 27. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Notice that because Jesus gave up his breath, he gives life to us. And now this breath of resurrected life, it's found in our divine service. Every time we hear the words of absolution, Jesus saying to us, I forgive you. Our Lord is breathing on us new life. It reminds me of the Chronicles of Narnia in that you see a bunch of stone statues that the white witch has touched. And after Aslan's resurrection, he breathes on these stone statues and they come to life again. It is right out of John chapter 20, where Jesus breathes on his disciples and he places them into the office of the holy ministry. The preached word. It kills false hopes that we have, and that reminds us of the dry bones that we see in our text for today, the, the slain ones, and it gives life to the dead. And with this breath in you, God sees you as already raised up with Christ in the heavenly realms. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 tells us, this is our comfort and our hope because of Romans 8:11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Breathing is a big deal. And today God calls us all to receive the breath of resurrected life that comes only from Jesus. So take a breather. In him is a breath for the weary and heavy laden, for the crushed in spirit, for the despised and lowly. The breath he gives enters into the deepest dryness of our life and revitalizes who we are beyond all understanding. In Jesus is the breath of life that extends even beyond the grave. So breathe easy, my friends. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I encourage you to remember St. Luke's with your offerings. Please send it to 330 Sunset Avenue, Manhattan, Kansas, 66502. We can also receive those offerings through our website, stlukesmanhattan.org. Go to the About Us tab and click on the Financial Support tab. Thank you.
come before the Lord in prayer. We come, O oh Lord, with the dry bones of our broken hopes and disappointed dreams. Bind us up in Christ, that we may learn to pray with confidence, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all things needful to us and to our salvation. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, eternal Lord, your Son has given us the new birth of water and the word and planted faith in us that we might be your own children. Bless your church and supply her with able and caring pastors to nurture us in your word and raise up faithful church workers who will serve us in your name. Keep your church in your mercy that she may believe without fear and love without limit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all our enemies and teach us to be good and faithful citizens of this land, using all our manifold resources wisely and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, your son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer illness, who are troubled in mind, and whose time on earth is short. Raise us by your gracious intercession, and deliver us from all afflictions of this life to reign with you in heaven forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O eternal God, you carry the grief of those who mourn and remember all who die in Christ. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, that they would not grieve as people without hope, but trust in you to deliver us from death to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Bless our labors and grant us wisdom to use the fruit of those labors wisely and well for the care of our families, for the poor of their needs, and for the support of your work in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the missionaries planting churches near and far. Bless those churches with whom we partner in the worldwide work of the gospel. And bless the congregations now struggling to fulfill your bidding and do what you have called them to do in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, loving God, you established the family and ordered our relationships by your word. Renew husbands and wives in their love for each other and refresh your families in the grace of caring that our homes may be places of blessing and peace where we serve each other in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift before you the health concerns of Darlene Mormon, Lily Wyatt, Paul Bosch, Wally Becker, Edna Williams, Ruth Kant, Joyce Nelson, Lucy Love, Erna Haas, Bill Hosier, Nyla Mathis, Heather Fong, Walt Meyer, Phyllis Wyerts, Pat Rowland, Laureen McAtee, Janice O'Brien, and Shirley Williams. Lord, we pray for Phyllis Wyerts, who was in the hospital. We pray for Lila McCosh. We pray for a church member having surgery on May 28th. We pray for Kate McNeil's grandson, Daniel, who is awaiting a possible COVID-19 diagnosis. And we pray for her granddaughter as well in Arizona, who is improving. We pray for Melissa Bean's father, Bart, who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. We pray for continued vigilance for the health of self and others. We pray for continued health for our community and our country. We pray for our families. We pray for your healing and good health. We pray for your protection and work and travel. We pray for a cure for the coronavirus to be found quickly. We pray for our health care providers, and we pray for our church and government leaders. We give thanks for Sherry Manry's successful knee replacement surgery and recovery. 
We give thanks for neighbors helping neighbors, and we give thanks for our health care providers. We lift up to you our first responders, law enforcement officers, and firefighters. We lift up to you those celebrating birthdays this week, including Ann Dinwiddie, Randall Jurasek, Barbara Genshork, Linda Simon, Kip Campbell, Julie Teeley, and Richard Morgan. And we lift up to you those celebrating anniversaries, especially Jim and Martha Mooneyham and Jesse and Charity Smith. O Lord God Almighty, through your Son you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You have raised up the dry bones of a people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain us in this hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and be ready when our Savior comes again in his glory. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, one for you by Christ Jesus, and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>